Hi there, it's me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, today's episode is going to be called, I Wear My Sunglasses at Night. Well, I went out, and I got some sunglasses. Now, a couple months ago, I went to my first uh, stroke support group in my area for people that have had stroke. They meet once a month. Um, depending on where you are in the world, depends on what is available to you how often they meet and what their focus is. So mine is in all ages, all abilities, doesn't matter who you are. Um, or, you know, even if you've not had the stroke, it's meant for those that have had the stroke and the stroke supporters. Um, no, I'm not advocating people support people get stroke because this is an utter just shit sandwich. But I found it at my first stroke support group that other people have hypersensitivity to fluorescent light. And uh, I have that in spades. So on Monday uh, of this week, I went out and purchased these. Okay. So, not that I intend to enter like a Roy Orbison kind of um, cosplay group or impersonation troop. Um, I need these. Okay. So there may be many of you out there that are suffering sort of in silence with some of your symptomology, right? Some of the problems you're having post-stroke. Well, I'm here to say you don't need to suffer in silence. This is not a suffer in silence situation. This is where you have to learn to improvise, adapt, and overcome, then persevere. So um, I've been debating sunglasses. I spoke with the optometrist uh, and the optician. Uh, they both agreed that, yeah, I could benefit from it. Um, I debated getting prescription sunglasses, then it's like, well, if I lose them, or I break them, or they get stolen, uh, or they get scratched, uh, or if they can't put the new prescription in the old lens, well, I'm kind of screwed. Or in the province of Quebec, le screwed. Um, and as to avoid that, well, I'm going to be fitted for contacts on Monday of next week. So, I got the glasses on Monday. Uh, I spent on Monday about an hour and a half tripping around Walmart. Uh, actually I actually had to do some shopping. Uh, and then I went to a grocery store that didn't have things that, or did have things that Walmart did not. And then on Tuesday, I spent about two hours at the local mall for the weekly stroke walking group, which meets every Tuesday for two hours. Uh, and then after those two hours, I went into stores in, in downtown in Aurelia looking for like winter boots and whatnot, because it's Canada, winter is coming. Um, and the fun fact about living at the south end of northern Ontario or the north end of southern Ontario, yeah, it can get pretty egregious. Um, where we can get a meter, you know, three feet of snow in an afternoon. No problem at all. Um, you know, so... I, and then Wednesday, again, I was out and about in the world, and then yesterday I was out and about in the world. Um, I have spent more time in the last four days in the world under fluorescent lights, or very harsh lighting, um, for two, three, up to four hours at a time, and I've had no significant negative or adverse effects. Um, I haven't come home. Uh, with a crippling headache. I haven't come home with nausea. I haven't come home um, being a stumbly mess. And I mean, you, you can visibly um, watch my gait change from almost a full swing step out uh, on both legs to my right leg, its pace and cadence shortening in pace um, and quickening in, in cadence. Um, to all of a sudden it, it gets into that like a shuffle with both feet um, uh, or uh, where my aphasia starts to kick in because I'm be becoming frustrated or befuddled or confused um, yeah it, 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 it's 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 been a godsend to use the term um, it, it has been liberating um, I have been able to be more interactive without major adverse effects in the last week than I have in the last 
two and a half months, you know, where you have to plan trips. And even though you plan the trip, <laughs> things go wrong. I've learned this week that grocery shopping should be done around 7 o'clock at night because the stores are not that full. Um, if I want to go to a restaurant, I need to go um, near the end of their service period. So if your restaurant's going to close at 8, I'm showing up at 7, 7.15, right? Uh, um, I've learned a lot of things this week. Things that I'm going to have to learn to, to, to adapt. Um, times I might have to improvise. And that's only so I can improvise, overcome, you know, adapt, improvise, overcome, and then persevere. Um, because this isn't just a survival event. Life is not meant to be a survival event. Right? Um, and I, I'm encountering new obstacles, and I'm finding new ways to breach them. Um, it's... The stroke hasn't been completely negative. Let me just be honest about that. There are some very liberating aspects to this. And if you've watched some of my videos, you'll see that I think the new normal, and is for new normal, I think I talk about it there. But then again, I'm a man who's had a stroke, so I'm medically and genetically screwed when it comes to memory, so. <laughs> um, yeah. So when I go back to work, I'm going to have to wear sunglasses indoors under fluorescent lights. When I go to the mall, I'm going to have to wear sunglasses indoors under fluorescent lights. And it, and it won't matter the time of day. It won't matter the time of year. Now the winter is coming, um, and it's going to get bright and sunny. When it's snowy and daytime outside, I'm going to probably have to wear sunglasses. Um, I'm kind of thankful. Yeah, I know there's, I'm about to get some shit on the internet. I'm kind of thankful that it's fall and gray outside. It's overcast. My eyes love it. Right? My brain is enjoying it. Um, I've been able to, to, to spend more time out in the world and enjoying that time because of these sunglasses. They've, they've literally provided me a sense of freedom I haven't really had in three and a half-ish months. I can remember the first part after my stroke where I would just try to push through things. And I would pay the price. Right? And friends of mine um, that had taken me grocery shopping um, or to the store or whatever, or people that I'd run into at the store, um, had to see me, you know, in a complete shit sandwich state, like just absolutely, or they've watched me devolve, um, in, 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 into a shit state, like leave the house, go with them, be okay. Five minutes into the store, just useless. Right. Um, so Yeah. And I know for people that have that know me and care about me, that can't be easy to watch. So, <clears throat> just keep in mind there may there may be non-standard solutions to your problems. Um, now, will everyone around you be accepting of these sort of non-standard solutions? No, that's okay. They're horrible humans. You know, you, you cannot be held accountable or responsible for the horrible humans out there. If, if they're truly going to be horrible humans, well, fuck them, right? Um, if they can't accept the fact that you need a little bit of accommodation. Um, and I ran into a, a young lady at my support group who's not too far off my age. Um, she's a number of years post-stroke. Uh, and she, again, she said for like the first year and a half, two years... She had some vision problems that involved light sensitivity, specifically to fluorescent lights. And I'm like, sweet, this could end. This might not be a forever thing. So, you know, um, so in the short term, at least, I need sunglasses and I might need earplugs. Um, the sunglasses is the first piece, right? Um, now, ambient noise is the second piece. So I'm going to go and get a little, that shopper's drug mart. Like a little box of some of, of like ear earplugs for like 12 bucks. Something I, I it's, it's ridiculous how, how cheap it is. Um, I'm gonna try those out um, and see how that works. Because um, right? there might be times where I'm gonna have to, it's not, a, I'm not ignoring you, I have earplugs in. Um, so, you know. I'm still considering there might be days I might need a cane. Like if I'm having a really shitty day, I might need a cane. You know? 
Um, so, because there are some days where I feel a little bit wobbly, right? I'm still debating if that'll be a thing or not. I honestly don't know if that'll be a thing or not. Um, I'm debating it. Um, I'm also debating a therapy animal, right? Um, getting some type of therapy animal. Well, I've seen recently people have tried to get a support squirrel on an aircraft um, and then also get a support peacock on an aircraft. What about a support rattlesnake? Not that cuddly. Couldn't really open doors that well. Would be overly effective at dealing with horrible humans, so... And doesn't fit well with a collar and a leash. Like, you can't really get a harness for a snake, so we're just going to leave... They don't have shoulders. It, you know, it, it, um... Support gecko? Really, they're just going to help you get insurance. Right? Like, they're like that, that's all your support gecko is going to get. And they're going kind of to kind of sound kind of snooty because they have a British accent. Um... Support gerbil? Well, only if Richard Gere's around is that even remotely applicable, so no. No, I'm thinking, you know, uh, lab, husky, uh, shepherd, a working animal, right? Um, so if I start to get stumbly, I can, you know, put a saddle on it and ride it home. Great Dane, ooh. Irish wolfhound. You know, something that'll help support me if I'm getting stumbly. I am considering that. So, you know... If it comes to that, I'll include you happy people, all my stroke folk, on this lovely little journey of what it takes to uh, get a support animal and, and whatnot. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that'll play out. It's still a consideration I'm making. So, the ultimate takeaway is, um, there are, in the first acute, and when I mean acute, I'm going to say zero to six months, because I'm still on that zero to six months phase, um, there are going to be times where you might have to find solutions, right? And those solutions, you're going to have to seek them out sometimes on your own. Uh, I went to my GP uh, knowing I had problems. Um, I asked my GP for a new eye exam, so they gave me a referral to the eye doctor, so OHIP would pay for it. I wanted to make sure that there was no... Uh, retinal damage or optic nerve damage due to familial history. Um, mainly my father, because he's blind in his right eye. So literally, if you're on that part of the world, you don't exist. Plays a wicked game of Marco Polo. You know, but only if you're on his right side. Um, and, and that being said, so I was concerned. And also there can be vision problems post-stroke. So I was concerned on that front as well. And I just needed confirmation, right, that, yeah, this is a medical thing, and it is a medical thing. And I might need a note for my workplace. I, I, I don't know if that'll be a case or not. I haven't actually had that discussion yet. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's something that I'm going to use, that I'm going to use to improvise, adapt, overcome, and then eventually persevere. Um, through some of the conversations I've had, it's um, possibly not permanent, which is an amazing thing, right? Um, not, But you know what? I have zero fucks to give. If you can't handle the fact that I need to accommodate my life to be able to continue my life in a, in a method and fashion that I want to live it in, I don't care. I really don't. You've just proven yourself a horrible human, and I don't need to know you. So, anyways, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the last, coming up on four months and about 19 days, um, no, no, sorry, five months and 19 days. I can't do math. Um, I really couldn't do it before the stroke, so that's okay. Um, please, like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, if there's something you want to see me cover, Either leave a comment down below or you can uh, reach me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassalter at gmail.com. Um, I have Twitter, but I've really yet to use it. Um, so, if there's something you want to see me cover, please don't hesitate and get in contact with me. And if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you the signs 
or symptoms of a stroke, right? Uh, which is commonly known as uh, facial droop, right? So you've got right side facial droop, left side facial droop, or possibly complete facial droop. Uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Inability to smile equally effectively or at all. Slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. General body weakness, weakness on one side. Uh, inability to stand unaided. Please uh, immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.